Welcome! In this lesson from my Organic Chemistry playlist, we'll dive into the topic of naming complex substituents. I'll guide you through how to name them using both common and systematic names, with plenty of examples to make everything clear and easy to follow. Let's begin by defining what we mean by complex substituents. A complex substituent is a substituent that includes branching or has a more intricate structure compared to simple alkyl groups like ethyl, propyl, or butyl. For example, instead of a simple straight-chain propyl group, you might encounter something more complex, such as an ethyl group with a methyl branch, resulting in a 1-methylethyl substituent. Now that we've defined complex substituents, let's move on to an example. We'll start by naming a simple substituent and then modify it to create a more complex one, adding a layer of challenge. When examining this molecule, the first step in naming it is to identify the parent chain. Here, the longest continuous chain is easy to identify. It consists of 12 carbon atoms, making the parent chain dodecane. Next, we need to number the chain to ensure that the substituent receives the lowest possible number. Starting from this end of the chain, the substituent is located on the sixth carbon. If we were to number from the opposite direction, it would fall on the seventh carbon, which gives a higher number. To follow the naming rules, we number it from the end that places the substituent at position six. Since the substituent at this point is a simple ethyl group, the name of the compound is 6-ethyldodecane. Now, let's make it more interesting. What if we modify the substituent and turn it into a complex substituent? Imagine that the ethyl group itself has a branch, a methyl group attached to its first carbon. To name this complex substituent systematically, follow these steps. First, identify the longest chain within the substituent. In this case, the ethyl group serves as the base chain. Next, number the carbons in the ethyl chain, starting with the one attached to the main chain as the first carbon. Here, a methyl group is attached to the first carbon of the ethyl chain. Finally, combine the names. The branch methyl is identified, and its position on the ethyl chain, 1, is specified. Together, the substituent is named 1-methylethyl. Now, let's return to the parent structure. The complex substituent we just named, 1-methylethyl, is still attached to the sixth carbon of the dodecane chain. Following IUPAC naming rules, the full name of the molecule becomes 6-1-methylethyldodecane. When writing the full name of the compound, make sure to place the entire complex group name in parentheses preceded by a number that indicates the position of the group on the main chain. Now, let's name this substituent using its common name. In common nomenclature, the 1-methylethyl group is called an isopropyl group. The name isopropyl reflects its structure, a chain of three carbon atoms where the middle carbon is connected to a branching methyl group. Using this naming system, the full name of the compound is 6-isopropyldodecane. Now, what if we make the substituent even more complex? Imagine adding another methyl group to the first carbon of the ethyl group. This creates a substituent with two methyl branches on the first carbon. To name it systematically, follow these steps. Identify the longest chain within the substituent. The ethyl group remains the base chain. Number the carbons in the ethyl chain. Start with the carbon attached to the main chain as carbon 1. Name the branches. With two methyl groups attached to the first carbon, we name them as dimethyl groups. The systematic name of this substituent becomes 1,1-dimethylethyl. Combined with the parent chain, the full name of the compound is 6 11 dimethylethyl dodecane. In common nomenclature, this substituent is referred to as a tert butyl group because it is derived from butane with a tertiary carbon structure. Using the common naming method, 
The compound's name would be 6-tert-butyl-dodecane. Now, let's change the length of the basic substituent. We'll start with a simple substituent with three carbons, which is called a propyl group. Next, we'll add branches to this substituent to make it more complex. Start with a propyl group. This straight-chain alkyl group contains three carbons and serves as the base substituent. Add a methyl group to the first carbon of the propyl chain. To name this substituent systematically, we identify the longest chain within the substituent, which remains the propyl chain. Numbering starts from the carbon attached to the main chain, making the methyl group attached to carbon 1. This substituent is named 1-methylpropyl. Combined with the parent chain, the compound's name becomes 6-1-methylpropyl dodecane. In common nomenclature, this group is referred to as isobutyl. When attached to the parent chain, the compound's full name becomes 6 isobutyl dodecane. But what happens if we add a methyl group to the second carbon of the propyl chain instead? First, identify the longest chain within the substituent, which is still the propyl chain. Number the carbons in the propyl chain starting with the carbon directly attached to the main chain as carbon 1. In this case, the methyl group is attached to the second carbon of the propyl chain. This structure is named 2-methylpropyl in systematic nomenclature. When combined with the parent chain, the full IUPAC name of the compound becomes 6-2-methylpropyl dodecane. Now, let's consider the common name. In common nomenclature, the 2-methylpropyl group is more commonly referred to as the secbutyl group, which reflects its branched structure derived from butane. Using this naming approach, the compound would be called 6-sec-butyldodecane. Now, let's add another methyl to the second carbon of the propyl chain. This modification creates a more branched structure. To name the substituent, first, Identify the longest chain within the substituent, which remains the propyl chain. The second carbon now has two methyl groups attached to it. Numbering starts with the carbon attached to the main chain as carbon 1. This substituent is systematically named 2,2-dimethylpropyl. Combined with the parent chain, the full IUPAC name of the compound becomes 6 2 comma 2 dash dimethylpropyl dodecane. In common nomenclature, this substituent is referred to as the neopentyl group because it resembles a pentane derivative with a highly branched structure. Using the common name, the compound is called 6 neopentyl dodecane. In the previous examples, we explored both systematic nomenclature and common nomenclature to name complex substituents. While each method has its place, I personally prefer systematic naming. It's precise, universally recognized, and perfect for describing even the most complex structures without ambiguity. Common names, though convenient for simpler or well-known compounds, often lack the clarity needed as molecules become more intricate. Thank you for watching. I hope this lesson has boosted your confidence in tackling complex substituents. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more organic chemistry content. See you in the next video.